Starlink Report. This is the Starlink Report. The Starlink Report for April 19th, 2021. I'm Huey Poplock. First, let's do a recap. SpaceX is building an expansive satellite internet network in space called Starlink. The aerospace company launched its first batch of Starlink satellites into orbit May 2019. Now it has over 1,200 working satellites prepped for the service. A subscription to the beta is currently $99 a month. It costs a further $499 for the Starlink kit which includes a mounting tripod, a Wi-Fi router, and a terminal to connect to the satellites. The company recently won an $885 million federal subsidy in December to expand Starlink. Starlink was initially operated in parts of Northern US, Southern Canada, and most recently in the UK. In February, Starlink began opening up pre-orders to other parts of the world. Here's how you sign up. And now the latest Starlink news. In December, SpaceX connected to Peak Anjikum First Nation, a remote 3,000 person indigenous community in Northwestern Ontario to Starlink. Before the internet service, Peak Anjikum couldn't afford, couldn't offer higher education or health care and struggled with high suicide rates. Now they're able to access everything. Dave Brown, CEO of FSET, the company that linked up SpaceX and Pinkangcom, said in an interview with the Insider, we took a community that was one of the most technology disadvantages disadvantaged anywhere in the world. They now have become one of the most technology advanced yet are still remote living where they are and not having to move. 60 satellites were launched on April 7th. The most recent launch before this one happened on March 24th with prior flights on March 14th, March 11th and March 4th. That pace intentionally fast since SpaceX has said it aims to launch a total of 1,500 Star Starlink satellites over the course of the calendar year. On April 28th, a SpaceX Falcon rocket will launch the 25th batch of approximately 60 satellites for SpaceX's Starlink broadband network, a mission designated Starlink version 1.0 L24. In total, SpaceX has now launched 1,443 satellites for its Starlink constellation. SpaceX recently signed a new agreement with NASA that outlines how the two organizations will avoid close approach or collision events between their respective spacecraft. And SpaceX President Gren Shotwell said on Tuesday that the Aerospace company has reduced the cost of each Starlink terminal from $3,000 to $1,500 each. Starlink customers have to pay $499 for the kit, which includes the user terminal, also known as Dishy, indicating that SpaceX is covering the remaining cost of $1,000 for each one it produces. The company also just rolled out a new version that saved about $200 off the cost and is expecting the price of each terminal to reduce to the few hundred dollar range within the next year or two, according to Shotwell. Here's what it looks like. What early users of SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet think about the service, the speed, and more. Tech for Seniors regular Greg F. has been getting download speeds from 28 megabits per second to over 200 and upload speeds of around 11 megabits per second. That's his antenna on top of his roof. To get real life first impressions of the service, CNBC spoke to more than 50 people who have been using Starlink. Those surveyed included households in Canada and 13 US states. The majority of these Starlink users are in rural or remote areas, such as farmland or wilderness, 
with limited access to terrestrial broadband options and a few with no access altogether. This is a quote, I expect to keep the service at long term, a user in Montana told CNBC. The price of the beta for the service is more reasonable than any other option we have, and those are worse in performance. I will keep Starlink as long as it's the only broadband option available to me. Most users found the service's monthly price of $99 to be fair, and oftentimes a discount to other satellite broadband services and terrestrial options, especially given the average speed of Starlink service. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell last week said the company does not plan to add tiered pricing to, con to customers, emphasizing that it wants to try to keep it as simple as possible and transparent as possible. Barring a massive hailstorm, I don't see much hurting this thing at all, one user said. The SpaceX made sure to design the Starlight satellite dish to work in wintry and wet climates by building a heater into the dish itself. As a result, the dish can melt away any ice around it. Another quote, the hardest part was getting up on the roof, mounting the dish and running the wire from outside to the inside of the house, a Colorado user said. Obstructions to the antenna's view of the sky and therefore connection to overhead satellites was the most frequent issue for users installing the dish. A mobile application for Starlink users includes an augmented reality feature to check for obstructions and help find the right place to install the antenna. A quote, my trees are really tall and I underestimated the need for the Starlink's obstruction detecting app to really show zero trees, a user in Oregon said. The installation process and the apparent lacking of grounding for lightning in the equipment was a concern for a California user. Those of us in Florida will be concerned about that as well as we are the lightning capital of the world. CEO Elon Musk confirmed the news on Twitter Thursday, yeah, uh, quoting, Starlink should be fully mobile later this year, so you can move it anywhere or use it on an RV or a truck in motion, he said. We need a few more satellite launches to achieve complete coverage and some key software upgrades, Musk added in his tweet. Musk also tweeted that Starlink would probably exit its beta this summer. Musk also tweeted Friday that Starlink service uptime, bandwidth, and latency are improving rapidly. In February, Musk commented that Starlink internet speeds would double and latency would drop by the end of 2021. Starlink subscribers were getting faster internet than SpaceX said they should expect. Even in the freezing temperatures, high winds, and snow, Starlink has hit speeds of 175 megabits per second, users told Insider. To repeat, users also emphasized a key point that SpaceX itself has said, which is that the service is a boon for those in rural areas, but not a replacement for the existing internet service of people in cities. On April 25th, a Russian Soyuz rocket will launch 36 satellites into orbit for OneWeb, which is developing a constellation of hundreds of satellites in low Earth orbit for low latency broadband communications. This is a competitor to Starlink. And then again in June, a Russian Soyuz rocket will launch another 36 satellites into orbit for OneWeb. That takes care of our Starlink report for today. This has been the Starlink Report.